Hi, Michaela here with Michaela's Counseling. Um, I've been getting some requests lately that I talk a little bit more about shame and that I talk a little bit more about something that I think goes quite a bit with shame. It's called um, fawning. If you're familiar with uh, Pete Walker, he did a bit of an extension on your traumatic fight, flies, fight flight, freeze responses to um, include fawn. And fawn is where we actually make ourselves smaller. Maybe we collapse, we become nice, we become beseeching to other people. We charm. You know, we, we try to kind of get into somebody's good graces. And this is like another way that people learn to survive relationships where really their full self is, their full self isn't welcome. That, that's what a fawn response is is it can be both like a trauma sense of danger, but it's also a sense of relationship endangerment. Like somehow if I don't make myself conform or if I don't make myself pleasant, sweet, and unobtrusive, um, I'm going to lose these people. These people are going to get angry. Um, you know, it, it could be any kind of relationship thing where it just feels like it's going to go wrong if you're basically yourself, if you're your full, embodied, expansive, joyful, alive self. Um, your full embodied angry self, you know, like there is this sense that um, you can't be the full you, you know, and as kids, we don't do this on purpose. But what happens is we go into, you can look at it as either like a fun or a shame response. I think, I think in some ways they, they can be quite similar, at least how I'm looking at it, because they both cause us to get small. They both cause us to look down. They both um, can take us from a fundamental sense of contact with other people, you know, partly because it takes us out of contact with our full selves. You know, we're not being fully awake, alive, joyful, embodied. And, you know, we're, we're actually, we're trying to manage a relationship at this point, or we're in kind of just like a please don't hurt me kind of position. Um, sometimes it can be like a please don't notice me kind of position. So, you know, I'll just talk about these styles, but if you're one of the people who requested more talk about this, I'll bet you know a lot about what that feels like. And so I want to talk about like another way of looking at this. And that is that um, I didn't know this for quite a long time, but usually before a shame response, usually before a fun response, there is a flash of another emotion. That emotion is usually anger, very, very often anger. And so this is a really, really cool key because actually your, your shame attacks, they don't happen randomly. They happen in response to some kind of interaction and they very often happen in response to an interaction where you don't feel met, you don't feel validated. Maybe you really wanted something from somebody and they didn't give it to you. Maybe you reached out in some way, somebody didn't return your reach or they misperceived you. And so one key to, to working with the shame is actually to realize like, oh, you know, I kind of make myself smaller or I kind of make myself wrong because somehow I learned that it's not okay to have anger. It's not okay to have my full self in this relationship. And so instead of having anger, I shrink. Instead of saying, you know what? I think you're wrong. I think what you did was out of line. I think I deserve more or I think that you communicated that, you know, in a way that really wasn't sensitive to what I was saying. Like instead of actually, you know, expanding out, instead of saying, look, here's how I feel. This is this is my perception, you know, and even if you can't do that in a relationship, you can do that within yourself. You can learn how to claim your own anger. You can learn to kind of look for what the interaction is. And, you know, we can do, we can do a whole nother series on like, yes, probably there will be some not very contextual anger or some out of proportion anger. Um, so a lot of people um, who have this fond and shame response are also afraid of their anger. They're afraid of their anger because there's a big backlog of it. They're afraid of it because they haven't seen a map for expressing anger in like a constructive way. And so it's not like you just decided to disown your anger and go to shame, you know, as some kind of conscious thing. And it's not like it's necessarily as simple as like, okay, I feel angry about this and that's perfectly contextual and now I feel empowered because it may be. It may be that there's a backlog of anger. But what you could do is that is find that spark of life. You know, anger, anger is, it's, it's an enlivening emotion a lot of the time. It's a sense of something that isn't quite right. You know, it's, it's something we don't like. 
And so next time you're having a shame attack, next time you're making yourself small, see if you can map it back to an interaction and see if instead of making it like all about like, oh, I'm wrong, I shouldn't have asked, I shouldn't reach out, I shouldn't have said that thing, I, you know, it, it, instead of berating yourself, instead of making yourself wrong, see if you can just find the anger. Now, this doesn't mean you have to make the other person wrong either. You don't have to say, well, they're a terrible person because they did this thing or they failed me in this way. And I'm sure it's because they mean all these terrible things. Like, you know, you actually don't have to be against yourself. You don't have to be against people out here. You know, like there's a way to actually go, okay, I had a spark of anger. And contextual or not, this is what I felt. This is what I was hoping for. This is what I got. And one way that you can work with it is just even notice how you feel that anger, like in your body, like irritation or exasperation or, you know, some way that, that you felt kind of like a spark when somebody did something or failed to do something. And you don't even have to go with the story about that person. Like just for the purpose of this video, you can just find where that spark lives. Find where the spark lives inside. Find where that moment is if I don't like that and see if you can at least just notice and acknowledge like, hey, I had an important feeling here. You might still go to shame. You might still go to fun a little bit, but it might help you if you can remember there is a spark of life and very, very often for people who have like really, really strong, like paralyzing shame responses or really like um, debilitating like fun responses, what they learned was that their sparks of life, whether it was anger or joy, weren't welcome in their environment. So your body's doing what it learned how to do. Your mind's doing what it learned how to do. You've learned, you know what? It's a whole lot better for me if I attack myself. It's a whole lot better if I make myself wrong than tell these people that I think they're wrong or just even say that I'm disappointed and angry, right? And so your body's adapting to um, the liveliness in yourself. That's actually what's happening. Isn't that, isn't that fascinating? It's actually a really empowering way of looking at this because, um, yeah, I don't think I've seen a counterexample lately where I've seen somebody go into shame that actually wasn't on the heels of some kind of vitality, some kind of hope, some kind of awakeness and aliveness, and you can find that. Now, if this gets you into some other quagmires, it's, this gets you into some other struggles, maybe you start discovering, oh, I'm so afraid to find my vitality. Or actually, I notice that my joy or, you know, my hope in relationships that leads me directly into the spiral. And I'm not quite sure how to, you know, undo that. Find somebody to work with. Like, find somebody to help you through this. Like, find some guidance with somebody compassionate, you know, who's trauma attachment informed, hopefully, because, because there's a way to unwind this pattern. But sometimes when it is shame, it's a whole lot easier to do that interactively. It's a whole lot easier to do that when there's kindness, there's eye contact on the other side, and there's somebody modeling for you. Kind of this, this vitality, this aliveness, this ability to be with the different emotions that you're experiencing. And hopefully they'll have the ability to be with their emotions, with your emotions, and really, really be there for you in a way that's that's facilitative, that shows you a new way of having intimacy in relationships, like a new way where you don't have to shrink, you don't have to pull back, you don't have to attack yourself or make yourself wrong. You don't have to make other people wrong either. Like you can, you can have your vitality, other people can have their vitality, and you can discover that there are places where that's actually safe, that's actually okay, and you can discover like a new, new power a new kind of space in your body, um, and find ways to reclaim your, your vitality. So I hope that this is helpful for some of the folks I've been asking about fawning and shame. For me, it's been, it's been just intensely empowering to see this, uh, really, really work with people, really turn some lights on for people and really, really help them reclaim their joy, help them reclaim their hope in relationships. And, um, you know, just really, really gently work with some of the disappointment or the anger that arises. And uh, that, that can be a really, really powerful antidote to shame when you can look at that, you know, in a way that, that really supports you, that supports the aliveness in you. I hope this helps. I look forward to talking with you soon. Mm -hmm. Bye for now.